It's been more than 50 years since the moon's first visitors arrived on July 20th, 1969. When Neil Armstrong took humans' first step on the lunar surface, 600 million people crowded around televisions to watch. The world couldn't wait to see what the astronauts brought home, like mysterious moon dust and ancient rocks. After them, five more crewed missions made it to the moon in the years that followed before the Apollo program ended in 1972. Add to that the numerous uncrewed missions since Soviet probe Luna 2 first crashed on the moon in 1959. Altogether, we have now delivered about 500,000 pounds of human artifacts to our natural satellite surface. So why exactly have we left artifacts on the moon? Often, it is to make room for moon rocks to be taken back to Earth. This way, the additional weight of the moon rocks doesn't impact upon the return flight. Stepping onto the lunar surface is a hugely impressive feat of human endeavor, and the achievement has been marked by some of the things left on the moon. As Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin began their return journey to Earth, they disposed of anything they didn't need from the lunar module. This included the tube that the US flag had been rolled up in, the TV camera that they used to send footage back to Earth, and the tools that they used to gather moon rock and dust. In doing this, they created a toss zone, which lies to the west of the Apollo 11 landing site. It was important to lighten the load as they left the lunar surface. In the Apollo missions that followed, many things were left on the moon, adding up to an estimated 400,000 pounds of stuff. The dusty remains of five Saturn V rocket stages from the Apollo missions are the heaviest single items. Then there are the wreckages of spacecraft that smashed or were crashed intentionally at the end of their missions into the lunar surface. In February 1971, Alan Shepard from Apollo 14 surprised the world when he bounced across the moon carrying a golf club and two golf balls he had smuggled on board. With the TV camera rolling, Shepard attempted several one-handed swings before finally sending a ball soaring about 200 yards through space. Those two balls became unique gifts to the moon. Another astronaut was inspired to leave his trace in a very different way. During Apollo 16, Charlie Duke left a signed photograph of his family tucked in a plastic sleeve on the moon's surface. On the back it reads, This is the family of astronaut Charlie Duke from planet Earth who landed on the moon on April 20th, 1972. Charles Duke was the youngest person to walk on the moon, aged 36 in 1972. Exposure to radiation from the sun has most likely bleached the photo completely white by this point, but the sentiment stays the same. The bleached fate of Duke's photo was a similar fate to that of the many flags left on the moon. Each lunar landing was marked by the planting of a flag, a tradition that began in 1969 by Armstrong and Aldrin during Apollo 11, although deciding to plant the flag on the moon's surface during the Apollo 11 moon landing was made at the last minute. It is one of the most iconic images from the moon landing. All future Apollo missions would follow suit and plant their flags. Because there is no wind on the moon, the flags would never fly. Therefore, the flags were constructed with extendable metal poles so that when the flags were unfurled, they could be seen. The Apollo 17 flag, planted by Gene Cernan, had already been to the moon. It was carried to the lunar surface and back on Apollo 11, before being hung on the wall of mission control. To replace the flag in the office, a separate flag was taken to the moon during Apollo 17 and returned to the wall of mission control. In the late 16th century, Galileo Galilei is said to have dropped two objects of different masses from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This experiment was designed to prove that the speed with which they fell was independent of their mass. In 1971, Apollo 15 astronaut David Scott carried out a similar experiment on the moon's surface. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago, who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? 
Crediting Galileo as being instrumental to the achievements of the moon landings, Scott dropped a feather and a hammer at the same time, and the world watched as they fell at the same speed and landed on the lunar surface at the same time. Left behind by Apollo 15 astronauts, Fallen Astronaut is an aluminum sculpture created by Belgian artist Paul van Hooydonk. The small sculpture of a human was commissioned by David Scott, mission commander of Apollo 15. Scott claimed that the work was intended to represent the fallen astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts, and it was placed face down next to a plaque listing the names of the 14 people who had lost their lives during service. As well as fallen astronaut, other astronauts have left behind memorials to their colleagues. Armstrong and Aldrin left behind an Apollo 1 mission patch to commemorate the astronauts who died in 1967 during a test of the command module. The Apollo astronauts also dumped tools and television equipment that they no longer needed. They were shedding weight from their command module so they could maximize the number of samples that they could bring back to Earth from the moon's surface. In exchange for what they left behind, the Apollo mission were able to bring back some 850 pounds of moon rocks and lunar soil. Some of the abandoned items were carefully chosen ceremonial objects. Apollo 11, for example, carried not just the famous flag the astronauts planted, the lunar module sported a commemorative plaque honoring the landing, and the mission also carried a silicon disk inscribed with comments from the leaders of 74 countries. It contained goodwill messages from leaders of 73 countries written in tiny letters etched on the disk. Each message promoted friendship. The astronauts may have brought medals to commemorate dead Soviet cosmonauts, and they also brought a small gold olive branch, a millennia-old emblem of peace. Gagarin and Komarov were not the last people to be immortalized on the moon. In 1998, astrologist Gene Shoemaker's ashes were sent aboard an exploratory mission to the moon, where they now lie amid the lunar dust. Although a lot of the things left behind on the moon may seem to be space junk, studying what has happened to them over time after the exposure to radiation and the conditions of the moon's surface may one day be able to tell us new things about space. As NASA looks to revive its crewed missions to the moon by 2024, humans are almost certain to leave more footprints in the years to come. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to find out more interesting topics. And as always, thanks for watching.